Well, hello everyone. My name is Drew. I'm the worship pastor here at the Gilroy campus. Uh, I get to share with you this morning something that I've recently observed comes to my attention um, and has caused me to think about um, the way that I have been relating to people, especially in the last three weeks during this interesting and difficult time of shelter in place during the COVID virus. And um, something I want to share with you because I think it may actually impact the way that you interact with the people that are around you as well. So it began um, with a Zoom meeting. We, we as a staff meet once a week um, on a Zoom call. It's about 20 or so people. And we all got on. And once everybody was there, Pastor Kevin asked us to share how we're doing. Just checking in. It had been two full weeks or so of uh, like the full blown, you're stuck in your house, shelter in place. Um, can't leave unless it's essential. And he wanted to know how, how everyone was doing. And there was a pause after he asked the question. And then the first people to speak um, were comfortable enough to share that they were actually having a really difficult time, that uh, it was really challenging them, that uh, the separation, the inability to, to meet with people, to talk with people, to share time with people has been so hard that it's causing a little bit of depression, difficult to get out of bed. Um, and these aren't people who are weak in their faith. They're strong in their faith. I know them personally. Um, and so I was, I was a little surprised at how hard it was hitting them um, but it caused me also to think about um, the reason why these particular people um, were having such a difficult time. And uh, I was able to identify that the, the, the people that were sharing on, a, on the spectrum of introvertedness and extrovertedness, um, I would say are, are way over here on the extroverted side, the people that I've noticed that like to share uh, a lot of time with people. Um, and I had an interesting reaction as an introvert, um, one that I'm actually not very proud of. Um, I felt when they shared, instead of compassion, which is what I should have felt, um, I kind of felt like, well, you know, that's, that's hard for you. I'm sorry, but um, I'm doing okay. Like, I could probably do this for another month or so. This isn't as challenging for me as it seems to be for you. And, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Uh, hope it gets better for you. Uh, kind of like a flippant, uncaring, you know, I'm a wretched sinner to reaction. Um, and it got me thinking a little bit about one, uh, the difference in the way this is impacting people depending on their personality type, um, but also thinking about myself as a representative of introverts and the way that we have been impacted and are um, responding to this situation is maybe not the best response. Um, somewhat focused on my own my own issues if I have them and not really caring too much about how uh, other people are impacted. Um, now, before I go on and talk about um, kind of the way that that's shaped how I want to react um, and respond and interact with people, um, I wanna first share with you some things that qualify me as an introvert because I know a lot of people when I tell them that I'm an introvert, don't believe me. I say, well, you're in front of people all of the time and um, you know, you're know you on stage and on a microphone, you have to do that all of the time. It seems like you're really comfortable. Like, I don't really believe you that you're an introvert. Um, before I share with you though, those things that I think that will qualify me as an introvert, um, I'm going to show you now um, a graphic that has helped me to have a working definition of what it means to be an introvert or an extrovert. I know a lot of people um, use different definitions on how they qualify someone as introverted or extroverted, but this is something that I saw a few years ago that has really given me like a good working definition of what it means to be introverted and extroverted. As, as I read it and looked over the graphic, I was like, no, that's exactly what it feels like to be an introvert. Looking at the graphic, you can see immediately that this is by no means a comprehensive way of looking at introvertedness versus extrovertedness, but instead it's focusing in on one aspect, leaning heavily on this idea that the introverted person on the left is being drained by being in this conversation with this other person by social interaction. The person on the right, the extrovert, is being recharged, her battery, so to say, is being filled up by being with this other person. So keep in mind that this is not by any means some complete definition of what it is to be extroverted or introverted, um, but instead it's looking at one aspect. I don't mean to try to give a full definition. You'll have to excuse my limited working definition of what it means to be introverted and extroverted. And another thing to keep in mind is 
people aren't always just one or the other, but they fall somewhere in between and have maybe aspects of introvertedness and extrovertedness. But for the sake of this conversation, this is really the aspect that I'm leaning on, that extroverted people, they get recharged, they get refilled by being with other people. And introverted people, they get drained by being with other people. Now, I told you that I would share with you some things that qualify me um, as an introvert because a lot of people don't, don't believe me when I tell them that I'm an introvert because I spend time in front of the microphone, uh, in front of large crowds, and I seem comfortable. Well, let me give you four, four things that have happened in my life that should paint a pretty introverted picture for you of who I am. So first thing happened, uh, I was 19 years old. I moved in with a friend of mine um, in San Jose. And this is before I was a Christian, that's my disclaimer. We had a lot of parties at this house when I was in college. Um, and I quickly gained the reputation as the guy who would disappear during the parties and no one could find me. Um, and what would happen really is after some time, maybe an hour, two hours max, I would go into my car in the driveway just so I could be alone. I had had enough of the party and with other people. Number two, um, when I was 21, I moved to New York City um, all by myself. I didn't know anyone when I moved there um, and spent a huge amount of time with no friends and not really interacting with anyone. Um, and I was totally, I was totally fine. That was cool. Uh, Third one, uh, in I'd say three years later, um, I was about 24 years old, um, I traveled through South America for six months by myself. And same kind of thing, I didn't know anyone. I very rarely interacted with people that I actually like talked to on a friendship level. Spent a huge amount of time by myself. Totally fine, no problems with it. Um, and then the fourth one happens now, basically. Um, Recently, when we would start going over to, to friends or couples' houses, with me and my wife, um, we'd have kind of this issue where my wife, who has kind of both, she, she, she lands somewhere in the middle. She has both extroverted and introverted tendencies, but she does get recharged by being with people. Um, she would want to stay a lot longer than, than I do. So we had to kind of develop this system where I was like, hey, listen, I really only have in me about 90 minutes, maybe 120 minutes of interaction before I start like feeling like I need to leave, like I'm done, I don't really have any more to give, it's time to go. And so we've, we've learned um, over the years to kind of make that work. But it's true, basically, it doesn't even matter who it is or how close to them I am. I really have a very short amount of time that I can spend with people uh, before I need to be by myself. Um, so when I talk to you about the way that I'm interacting with people as an introvert, really I am. I'm, I'm somewhat true, a true introvert all the way through. Um, so I'm gonna speak to the introverts first, um, but I don't want the extroverts to go anywhere. So hang out, because I'm gonna talk to you too a little bit. So in reflecting on my own interaction and the way that I have been acting during this COVID-19 time, shelter in place time, um, I have thought about being introverted as like, this is my time. Like I often am out and about and I'm getting drained all of the time by the interactions with, I have with that I have with people. And though most of what's going on right now with COVID is really negative, one positive for me is that I get so much time by myself, or at least with just the really close people that I, that I live with, um, that I, I feel way less drained. My battery is way filled up. And I kind of have this like this feeling where I'm like, this is my time to really be charged. I never get this kind of this kind of time where I'm just filled up and I'm not pouring out into other people, not being drained and having to recharge. Um, and I've picked up from some of the like social media posts, um, some things about being introverted and extroverted during this time that a lot of other introverts are feeling the same way. Like, hey, we're cool. Like I, we could do this for a few more weeks and I'm kind of just living in a recharged way and I'm good. Now, I want to say uh, that it is our time as introverts, but not our time to sit selfishly charged. This is what I mean. Um, we pour out when we spend time with other people and we get drained. Um, but this time it's really important for us to remember that the people that we love, the extroverts that are around us, our friends, our family, those that are close to us, or maybe even just acquaintances that are extroverts are having a really hard time. And we can give them 
uh, something that they can't get by themselves. We can give them friendship and interaction um, and social relationship um, by phone or by uh, FaceTime or a Zoom call. Um, and though we may have this tendency to kind of retreat into, into our introvertedness, um, I want to challenge all of you introverts as I am challenging even myself right now. This is not something that's easy for me to do. Uh, come out of your shell a little bit. Call the people that you wouldn't normally call because you know they would drain you. You know who I'm talking about. The people that uh, will you know, comfortably talk your ear off. Some people that will share a lot and it will drain you and it will be difficult for you. I wanna encourage you and, and motivate you to give of something that you don't normally have. Um, and this is gonna be a hard thing to do uh, because you rarely feel this like charged fullness, but you will have plenty of time to recharge after these conversations. Um, this is something that you can do for your friends um, and those that you love around you um, that will cost you energy but won't cost you much else and it's something that you can do along the guidelines that we're receiving from our authorities. You can just call people, ask them how they're doing, um, spend time listening to them, call people that would will be surprised that you're calling them um, and just reach out to people. Yes, as an introvert and you'll get recharged, you'll have time to do that. Um, really this this is founded in our faith. We we as Christians, we don't have an excuse to sit around with our batteries charged. That's not something that's part of the Christian walk. Um, if you've been with us over the last year or so, you know that we recently went through um, a series in Ephesians, um, and Paul throughout Ephesians talks about what it looks like to be a Christian and to, be, to walk worthy of a calling that God has placed on your life as a Christian. And part of that is to live your life in a way that you value um, the unity of the body of Christ and you you value encouraging and pouring into other Christians. So I'm going to read to you a passage from Ephesians chapter 4 that speaks exactly of this. Um, it says this, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a matter, manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now, Paul is very clearly painting this picture of unity and to be unified with other members of the body of Christ is to be concerned with their needs, to be willing to give up uh, and to sacrifice on their behalf, to encourage them, to pour into them. So this is not a time for us as introverts to kind of sit back and enjoy our full tank, our full battery. It's a time for us to make the sacrifices so that we can build up and encourage those of us that are hurting more because of this thing, the, the extroverts, those that that really gain from being in social interaction. So I'm gonna call you and encourage you to do that and I will try to do the same, as difficult as it may be. It will help tremendously those around us that are struggling in this time. Now I said, extroverts, I had something for you too. Um, your introverted friends um, need to know how you're doing. And so if you are struggling and you're just trying to bear the weight of that, that isn't something for you to bear alone. Um, reach out to people and let people know, um, as some of my coworkers so comfortably did on that Zoom call, that you are struggling and having a difficult time. You don't need to, to pretend like you know everything's going great and you're firm in your faith and things are good. If you need someone to talk to, uh, call on those around you. And um, hopefully, both introverts and extroverts will step up to the call and be there to support you. But let the people around you know um, that you're in a place of need and that you could use the encouragement. Well, it's been great spending some time with you today. Hopefully both introverts and extroverts will walk away with something, some way to, to share with one another. And I encourage you just keep, keep going, keep trudging along. As Pastor Kevin recently told us, it's a time for us to, to stand firm and, you know, to, to think about the ways that we can pour into our relationship with each other and our relationship with God. Let me pray for us 
as we close our time together. God, thank you that you have not made us all the same, um, that we have both introverts and extroverts among us and everything in between. God, help direct us, help us to understand the way that we can support and be encouraging to those around us. Give us clarity and direction with those that we love, with our friends, with even acquaintances, God. How can we serve each other as one body, building each other up in Christ? We love you. Uh, we're close to you, God, because you were close to us first. Help us to be appreciative of the gift that you have given us through Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Have a great day.